Hi, so in this video, I'd like to talk about doing case insensitive string comparisons in Python. So in Python, we normally use the equals equals to compare strings. And of course, that is going to be case sensitive. For example, if we try this Python equals equals Python, that is not going to be equal because they don't have the same case. Now, a typical technique which I see a lot of people using for doing a case insensitive comparison between those two strings, in other words, let's say we want that to actually be equal to true, then people will sometimes use the lower method of strings or the upper method and basically convert both sides to either lowercase or uppercase and then do the comparison. So something like this, they may take this equality here but then they're going to call lower on both sides or upper on both sides, however you want to do it. And of course that returns true. And this is fine as long as you're dealing with pretty simple characters like ASCII characters, for example. In general though, there's a problem. The technique that we used here is sometimes called case mapping or case conversion. It is basically a process that converts the strings to a particular form, such as lowercase, uppercase, or even title case, and it should primarily be used for display purposes, not for comparison purposes, because in general, this isn't going to work. Here's an example where that's going to fail. I'm going to copy that from the notebook that you can get from the GitHub repo that's linked below this video. But if we have these two words, Strasse, which is a German word. So this is where I was saying, once we start getting away from the kind of very plain kind of ASCII alphabet, then we need to start being careful. And of course, if you have to deal with international strings, then you have to be really careful. Because from a case insensitive comparison perspective, these two strings are actually equal. It's the German word Strasse. Uppercase is spelled with two S's lowercase is spelled with this special character here. Now look at what happens when we do a lowercase comparison of the two. So if we say s1.lower, we'll print that out. We'll print out s2.lower, and then we'll print out s1.lower equals equals s2.lower. So let's see what this result is. So you can see that when we lowercase Strasse here, we ended up with this string, Strasse with two S's in lowercase. But when we lowercase this one, look what happened. That SZ stayed the same. And now the comparison is false. Now, if we'd actually done using the uppercase version of this, so let me copy paste this and do upper. If we had done the uppercase version of these two, then you would see that it actually works in this case. Let's see what we get. So you can see that the lowercase Strasse was uppercase to double S's here. So doing this case mapping is not a good idea in general. What is a little bit better is using something called case folding. And case folding, we can do this. We can say s1.casefold, then we'll do s2.casefold, and then we'll compare s1.casefold equals equals s2.casefold, like so. Now, as you can see, when we case folded S2, we actually did end up with the two S's. So case fold can address some of the issues surrounding case insensitive comparisons, but not all of them. Consider the following two strings, which I'm just going to copy paste from the notebook that's in the GitHub repo. If we look at these two strings, you can see that, well, they look to be the same. It's an E with a circumflex on it. Now, they may look like the same character, but let's do a comparison between the two. And surprisingly, that comparison comes back as false. So even though these two characters look the same, and we probably would want them to compare equal, case fold isn't going to help us out here. If we do s1.casefold and s2.casefold, and then we'll do s1.casefold equals s2.casefold, then you'll see that we still get a result of false for the comparison, even though those two characters look to be identical. And this is happening because these two strings use different Unicode encodings to define each character. The first string is actually a single character, whereas the second string is actually 
two Unicode characters. Let me prove that to you. Let's look at S1, the length of S1, and then S2, and the length of S2. And as you can see, even though these characters look the same, look at what the length is of string one. It's a character of one string, right? It's a string of one character. Whereas S2 is actually a string of two characters. So we can see what those characters are. Let's go and import Unicode data. And then from that, we're going to look at Unicode data and we're going to look at the name of that Unicode. So Unicode data name of S1, which is a single character. And you can see that the name of that Unicode character is Latin small letter E with a circumflex. And now let's do the same thing, but with S2. Now S2 is two characters, so we're going to have to use a list comprehension essentially to iterate through every character in S2. So we'll say for C in S2. And what are we going to do? Well, the same thing we did before. So Unicode data dot name now of C though for C in S2. And you'll see what the names are. So we start off with a Latin small letter E and then this other Unicode character called a combining circumflex accent. Basically, it's a modifier that gets added. It gets combined with the previous letter, right? The previous character that's right before it to put a circumflex on top of that character. So we can actually create those ourselves also by using the Unicode character codes. And the Unicode character code for that first one, that's Latin small letter with circumflex, is uh, EA. So we can look at this. We can say backslash U00 EA. So we'll use a lowercase u. We only need four uh, digits. So if we do that, you can see that we have the circumflex E. And then the other string was basically the lowercase E. So just the Latin E, which is the 65, which is 0065 in Unicode. And that combining circumflex accent is 0302. And if we do that, and I need to put a U in there, you can see that we get the same character that looks the same, but they are definitely not the same thing. And let's take a quick look at the information for that character. We'll go over here. And let me zoom in, but you can see this Unicode character E circumflex is 00EA, right? That's what we had. But if you scroll down, you'll see that there is also a decomposition for it, which is this Latin E plus the circumflex. That's that combination that I just showed you. So we can define this letter E in one of two ways. We can either use the Unicode EA or we can use a two character sequence, two Unicode character sequence, 65 and 302. The link is in the notebook that's in the GitHub repo. So they look the same. And in most cases though, we would want to consider them equal since as we see from the definition, it's really just two ways of describing the same character. So we need to perform an extra step to avoid this pitfall and that is called Unicode normalization. Now, in this case, we can use something called normal form denormalization. And I have a link to the specs, if you want, in the Jupyter Notebook. I'm not going to go through it here. And we can achieve that in Python by using the normalize function in the Unicode data module. So let's take a look at that. We're going to say Unicode data dot normalize. And then we're going to normalize with NFD. So we specify the string NFD for normal form D and we're going to do that with S1. And we get this character over here. And if we do the same thing with S2, we're going to get the same character. However, the difference is now that if we compare those two things, you'll see that they are indeed the same now. That's true. If we want to see what is the length, we can look at the length of these two things if you want. So when we do the normalization, what do we get? It normalizes to the decomposition, okay? And if we do that, then we get the same thing. So the idea is that we use this normalization here to get rid of these problems where we may have another Unicode character with a special code that's really a decomposition, and so therefore that we would fail in our comparison. 
So now we can deal with, let's say, the following two strings to do a case insensitive comparison by combining the NFD normalization and the case folding. Let's take a look at these two strings. I'm just going to copy them from the Jupyter Notebook so I don't have to type those codes out. But if we look at S1 and S2, you'll see that one is a lowercase e circumflex, which is using the decomposition. And then we have this uppercase e circumflex, which is using a special Unicode character code for it. Now, case folding by itself isn't going to work. If we do case fold equals equals case fold, then it's not going to work. Why? Well, because they're defined differently, right? As we saw with these normalizations. So just normalization will not work either, since the characters are obviously not the same case. So even if we try Unicode data dot normalize, and we'll normalize to NFD, and we'll specify S1, and then equals equals, and I'm just going to copy this, and then we'll do that with S2. That's not going to work either, but that we expected because there's not even the same case, right? One is an upper and low, and the other one's a lower. But we can combine those two things now. We can normalize and case fold. So we can take this expression, and all we need to do now is to case fold it on both sides, like so. And now we get true. So usually I end up with a small helper function. I'm not going to retype it. It's in the notebook in the GitHub repo. But with this, basically I have, you know, when I, when I do need to deal with cases like this, then I'll do a string comp method or function. I'll pass in my two strings. I'll specify whether I want it to be case insensitive or not. So this is really handling more than just case insensitive, but it's doing the normalization. And then if we want to check equality with a case insensitive equality, then we use the case fold. But it's important to do the normalization first. So we can try it with some more examples. Let's take a look at that. Let's see what S1 is and S2 is. So it's just the same thing, right? So it's going to work with the basically the E circumflex, right? One is already decomposed, the lowercase one. The uppercase one is using the Unicode character. We can do a string comp with S1 comma S2, and we can say case insensitive is equal to true, for example. That will return true. And of course, if we specify that it should it should not be case insensitive, so it should be case sensitive, that should be false because we don't have the same case. We can all it will also work with the previous example that we had with Strasser. Then we can do the same thing. So we can say string comp s1 s2 and then we'll say it's supposed to be case insensitive in which case it comes back true and if we say false it will come back false so case insensitive comparisons can be quite simple using case folding as long as you're dealing with simple character sets like for example the ascii character set but once you start considering internationalization issues things can get quite complicated and they'll get complicated very fast. Because this is just the tip of the iceberg. Depending on the particular language you're dealing with, things can get even more complicated. So depending on the language you have to deal with, you're going to have to do a little bit of reading up to see how you can do those kinds of comparisons. And that's it. Thanks for watching.